Well, the development of computerized perimetry actually started in the early 1970s. We used a computer with 12 kilobytes of magnetic RAM, which carried a price label equal to that of a one-family house. The International Perimetric Society was founded in 1974, and this was not a coincidence. All development of computerized perimetry were presented and discussed in lively ways at the meeting of the IPS. The uh, International Perimetric Society had its fifth meeting, the International Visual Field Symposium, in Sacramento in California in October 1982. At that time, Humphrey were planning to build a computerized perimeter and they sent several employees to the Sacramento meeting to learn and to seek collaboration with experienced researchers. This was a time before emails and internet and even before fax machines. So we used snail mail, telex, telephone and courier service, but also quite a lot of flying between Sweden and California. We actually worked quite effectively and the first HFA perimeter was delivered to Malmö for clinical testing in 1984. A big problem with computerized perimetry at that time was the presentation of the results. The results from the new perimeters weren't that easy to understand for clinicians. There were lots of numbers, but there was, for instance, no flagging of significances. For Staff Pack, we invented several new concepts. One was probability maps. Uh, we also invented pattern deviation concept. Staff Pack includes what is probably the first example of artificial intelligence in ophthalmology. The glaucoma hemifield test is actually a rather simple AI system, which proved useful for glaucoma diagnostics. The development of Staff Pack was completed in 1986, but we actually started thinking about CETA before that. At that time, the threshold testing was very time consuming. Tests often took up to 20 minutes per eye. With all traditional algorithms, there was a trade-off between test time and test quality. We wanted to create shorter tests without sacrificing quality, and we had figured out ways how to do that. When we stimulated CETA testing on mainframe VAX computers in 1988, each simulated field took more time than what the real test with the patients would do with CETA a few years later. When the HFA2 perimeter was released, it was equipped with very fast computers for its time, just in order to be able to do CETA testing. The original CETA tests, CETA Standard and CETA Fast, were released in 1997, 25 years ago. Patients were, of course, as pleased as doctors and nurses of these shorter tests. And CETA standard was also soon approved by the National Eye Institute for clinical studies. So both tests became global standards. Well, we all understood that the rate of progression and intraocular pressure, pressure really are the two most important parameters in glaucoma follow-up. So we developed a new VFI index and the GPA program with its summary printout to facilitate that. But a large percentage of glaucoma patients received much fewer tests than recommended in the guidelines because of lack of resources. That wasn't ideal at all. Yes, we understood that if we could create an even less time-consuming CETA test with the same test quality, most glaucoma patients might have the chance of a more frequent testing, and they will receive the treatment better tuned to their individual cl clinical needs. We decided to develop CETA Faster. The new test called CETA Faster gave the same results as CETA Fast and results that differed only slightly from those of CETA Standard. But test times with CETA Faster were much shorter. and CETA can be adapted to future needs. One such need might be the ability to better follow and assess field loss in patients with severe and end-stage disease. We hope that CETA is of help in your daily clinical work. We promise to continue to develop CETA for future clinical needs.